For years now, the debate has raged on DSD or PCM. Which one truly delivers the most lifelike sound? Some swear one is closer to analog. Others say it's all marketing spin. But the real story goes deeper. And in this video, we'll separate myth from reality and uncover what really matters when it comes to digital audio. Believe me when I say the truth is way more interesting than the hype and it's going to change how you listen to music forever. So in one corner you have PCM or pulse code modulation. It's the reliable universal workhorse. It's the format on your CDs, the backbone of most streaming services and the native language of the recording studio. It's been the bedrock of digital audio since since day one. In the other corner, there's DSD or Direct Stream Digital. This was the shiny new format that arrived with the Super Audio CD, SACD. And it was hyped as the second coming of analog. The marketing was genius. DSD was sold as being purer and more natural and a near perfect trace of the original analog waveform. The promise was a sound so smooth and spacious that it would make PCM sound clunky and obsolete. Audiophiles were told that to hear what the artist truly intended, you absolutely needed DSD. This created a powerful story. PCM was old news, a compromised technology. DSD was the future, the one way ticket to audio nirvana, and people bought it. Literally, this belief has driven people to spend thousands on new players, DACs, and pricey, hard to find DSD music files. Trust me, I've been down this road myself in my younger years. It has fueled countless forum wars with listeners swearing they can hear a night and day difference. But is that difference real, or is it just the most successful placebo effect in hi fi history? The stakes here aren't just about sound quality. They are about your time, your money, and that nagging feeling that you might have been sold a story. To see through the lie, you have to understand the tech. Don't worry, we'll skip the heavy duty engineering. Let's make it simple. Imagine you want to perfectly recreate a smooth, beautiful curve. You've got two ways to do it. First step PCM. Think of PCM as an incredibly precise game of connect the dots. You take thousands of snapshots of that curve every single second. That's the sample rate. For a CD, that's 44,100 snapshots a second. Then for each snapshot, you can use a ridiculously detailed ruler to measure its exact height. That's the bit depth. A 16-bit ruler has over 65,000 markings and a 24-bit ruler has over 16 million. You plot those super precise points, connect them, and you get the recreation of the curve with breathtaking accuracy. Then there's DSD. Forget the ruler. DSD is more like a sculptor's hand trying to trace the curve in one continuous motion. Instead of measuring the curve's exact height, DSD uses a simple one bit signal that just asks Is the line going up or is it going down? But it asks this question at a mind-blowing speed, millions of times a second. The standard DSD-64, for example, samples the signal at over 2.8 million times per second. This rapid-fire stream of up and down commands creates a pulse of energy that, once smoothed out, mimics the original curve. On paper, the DSD method sounds so much more organic, right? A continuous stream sounds more analog than a bunch of dots. That's the entire marketing pitch in a nutshell. But now it's time to pull back the curtain. After years of testing gear, talking with engineers and listening, the flawless image of DSD started to crack. The marketing story and the engineering reality for me just didn't line up. Here are three big secrets the hi-fi world doesn't like to talk about. Secret number one, the myth of pure DSD. This is the big one. The whole marketing pitch for DSD 
hinges on its purity, an untouched direct stream from the microphone to you. But here is the dirty little secret, almost no DST recordings are pure DST from start to finish. Why? Because raw 1 bit DST is a nightmare to work with. You can't really edit it, you can't mix tracks, you can't add reverb and you can't easily adjust volume. All the basic essential steps of making a record. So what do the studios do? If they often record in DST, they then convert the entire thing to PCM to do all the mixing and mastering. When they are done, they convert it back to DST for the final SACD or download. Let that sink in. The format that is supposed to be pure has in most cases been converted to its rival and back again. The very digital processing DST was supposedly designed to avoid is baked right into its production. The idea of an unbroken pure DST stream is for the vast majority of music you can actually buy a complete fantasy. Okay, secret number two, enter the modern DAC. Okay, so the recording is not pure, but if you have a DSD file and a DSD capable DAC, at least the playback is superior, right? Not so fast. Here is another inconvenient truth. Most modern DACs are probably converting everything to a DSD like signal internally anyway. That is right. When you play a normal PCM file from a CD or Tidal or Cobas, the chip inside your DAC often upsamples it to a high frequency, multi bit or single bit stream that looks an awful like DSD, like 1 bit to 5 bit ish before it comes, before it becomes the analog sound you actually hear. This process is called delta sigma modulation and it is an effective way to manage digital noise. Now, R to R ladder DACs are the opposite. They natively decode PCM, so they down convert DSD to PCM. So that whole cage match about which file format to feed your DAC becomes kind of pointless. If the DAC is just going to use its own favorite conversion method on the inside anyway. The war you think is happening on your hard drive was already won inside the DAC's architecture. Secret number three, the master is the master. This brings us to the most important point of all. We have been so obsessed with the delivery truck, DSD or PCM that we forgot to check the quality of the cargo. The single biggest factor in how a recording sounds is not the file format. It is the mastering. Sure, there are amazing sounding DST recordings, but they sound amazing because they were masterfully recorded and engineered, not because of the file format itself. You can have a technically perfect DSD 256 file, but if it was recorded with cheap microphones in a bad sounding room or mastered by an engineer who just removed the life out of the dynamics, it will sound awful. On the flip side, a brilliantly recorded and skillfully mastered album released as a plain old 16 bit 44.1 kilohertz CD file can sound absolutely breathtaking, full of life, depth, dynamics and emotion. The real artists here are the recording and mastering engineers. The file format is just their canvas. A bad artist will make a mess on the world's finest canvas while a great artist can create a masterpiece on a simple one. Okay, so what is the lie? The lie is not that DST and PCM are different. They are. The lie is not that some people might like the sound of one over the other. Taste is subjective, we know that. The lie is that the format is what you should be losing sleep over. The lie is that one is so inherently superior that it should control what you buy, how you listen. The truth is a great PCM master will sound better than any lousy DSD master every single time and vice versa. This is more relevant than ever in our world of streaming. Services like Tidal and Cobas run on FLAC, which is just a space saving wrapper for PCM. DSD is still a niche format for diehard enthusiasts. 
but for 99% of us, the digital world runs on PCM. So what should you do? It's time to change the target. Stop chasing formats and acronyms. Stop worrying about whether DSD-256 is audibly better than 16 or 24-bit PCM. The difference when the master is identical is often so small it's barely audible, if at all. Instead, start chasing great recordings. Chase great mastering engineers. Find the record labels known for their fanatical commitment to sound quality, no matter what format they use. ECM Records, known for pristine jazz and classical recordings with natural acoustics and spacious sound. The founder, Manfred Eicher's ECM sound is legendary. Reference Recording Label, Keith o. Johnson's, this is Keith o. Johnson's label, producing orchestral jazz and classical with huge dynamic range. Chesky Records uses minimalist miking and natural acoustics for intimate, realistic sound. Telarc, famous for classical and jazz, wide dynamics, and early adopters of digital recording done right. Don't let a file extension tell you otherwise. The road to audio nirvana isn't paved with higher sample rates. It's paved with better music, brilliant recordings, and a real appreciation for the art of sound itself. The DSD versus PCM war is the perfect example of, a, of marketing creating a problem just so it can sell you the cure. It's a distraction from what really matters. So now that you know the truth about DSD and PCM and how important mastering is, you should check out these videos about how mastering shapes the music you love, well-recorded albums, and other high-res myths. Let's shift the conversation as a community. Let's stop obsessing over file types and start celebrating amazing recordings.